Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I am taking this old $10 chunk of walnut, going to be cutting it into a perfect circle, adding a all-new finish to me that is essentially waterproof. I'll show you a one-hour test I did at the very end, and the whole thing took me about three hours. So here we go. What I'm doing with the string isn't exactly scientific. I just wanted to find a rough idea of where center was so I could still leave a good portion of that live edge. Then I just drilled a small eighth inch hole, which is gonna just fit a small little brad nail that rides on my circle jig, which when I spin it, leaves the live edge yet creates a perfect circle. So works really well and really easily. You can see I didn't quite make a small enough circle though, because there was still some square portions to it. So I had to go back move it in about a half inch, which was gonna make my circle one inch smaller overall. And on this pass, we got it just perfect to how I wanted it. Overall, it was a pretty solid piece of walnut, meaning there was no rot in it and not really much in the way of cracks. There were some small little hairline cracks that I was able to fill in just a few seconds with this CA glue and activator. And if you're curious what that is, I will include links to that and everything else I use in the video in the video description below. And those are affiliate links which just means I get a small percentage of anything that you buy. If you do find anything useful in this video and you want to give it a shot, I do appreciate if you buy it in those affiliate links, but you're obviously not required to. Most of the time when people are rounding over an edge, they'll do like a half inch round over on bottom, half inch round over on top and call it good. And I wanted to do just a slightly different look just to make it a little bit more original. So I started here with a half inch bit and in the end, it wasn't quite enough. I did several shallow passes to prevent any burning. But what I ended up doing was a three quarter inch round over on the bottom and then just an eighth inch round over on top. And not a huge difference. I doubt most people would even notice, but I thought it made it a little bit more interesting. Whether this is your first time to my channel or you watch every week, I want to take a quick second to thank everybody for watching my channel because I know there's a ton of content you guys have to choose from and it means a lot to me that you choose to watch my channel. And a lot of people ask me what the best way to get a hold of me, what the best way to ask me something is, and I always tell people the YouTube comments because I actually have shop hours dedicated just to answering YouTube comments. I miss a lot of emails. I don't get a lot of the direct messages on Instagram. So I will get to every single question or comment you guys have below. And if you look at last week's video, there's like 4,000 comments. I have addressed every single one of them that wasn't wildly inappropriate. So if anything isn't clear here, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I will give you my opinion or why I chose to do it a certain way. The only thing I ask is if you like this video, if you get something out of it, just hit that subscribe button. That's what enables me to keep creating more content is by growing my subscribers. So I would appreciate it if you hit that little bell up in the corner right now. Anyway, back to this video and I am using Rubio Monocoat Finish. And I do wanna address one thing. This in no way is a sponsored video. I did not ask for anything from Rubio. They did not ask anything from me. They didn't send me the finish. They didn't send me any money. This is completely independent. I follow a guy, Lux Edge Furniture on Instagram, does some beautiful finishing, and I had recently had some problems with finishes that I'd used, so I decided to give this Rubio a chance because he highly endorsed it. So. First impression, I do not like the two-part mixing. You have to mix both parts together, and that means if you mix too much, you've wasted it. And if you mix too little, you have to try to mix up a new ratio and get that ratio right. So it's kind of a pain to mix up the two-part, but it does smell really nice. It does go on really easily. And I'm not an expert at the Rubio yet. I hope to be soon, but you basically buff it in and then wipe off all the excess. And I do love the fact that you wipe off all the excess because when there's some like Osmo, they tell you to leave some on and how much some is can be a little bit kind of confusing. But you see there, I had just barely enough and that would have been really frustrating if I ended up short on the amount of finish needed. So overall, it's not the easiest finish to use in terms of mixing it up, but as far as ap applying it, it's super easy. You just buff it in and then wipe off all of the excess. We are going to set this top aside for a little bit while we build our base for this round end table. And in the past, I don't love using these angle gauges because they have about a 0.2 error, but that is going to be more than accurate for the angle that we're going to be using here. And I can't even remember why I chose, but I went with a 21 degree angle. And so what I did was I zeroed it here, brought it down to my table, and that enabled me to find that 21 degree angle. So first off, we're going to cut a bunch of copper stock. And this is just plumbing pipe. And it might look really cool to you, or it might look just like plumbing pipe, but we're going to sand it up and it should be pretty nice looking in the end. I was a little embarrassed because I had to Google basic geometry to figure this out and I had to figure out how to break it into thirds. And it turns out if you take the radius and then swipe it on the side, that will give you the thirds of your circle. So that's what I did. I marked right there at the third mark and my other one 
right there. And then after that, I am gonna come back and mark an inch and a half up on each of these, and that'll give me my consistent angle for my three-way legs. What I really need to learn is how to do renderings on a program like Fusion 360, because all of these numbers are pretty much arbitrary. I didn't exactly know how this was gonna look in the end. Overall, I was pretty happy with it, but if I could do a rendering in Fusion, it would be really cool to know the exact angles of everything before actually building it. So until I get good with computers, I'm gonna to have to keep building things manually and hoping they turn out cool. I love these drill bits, by the way. I believe they're called a Bormax, and they're mostly European, so I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to find an affiliate link to put below, but if I can, I will, but don't hold me to it if there is no link for this particular style of Forstner bit. The plumbing pipe I got was not exactly furniture grade, so what I did is I took my sanding glove there and some 320 grit mesh and just sanded it uh, vertically and it shined up really fast and really easily. So I liked the 320 grit. I did come back later with kind of a 600 grit scotch bright pad and made it really quite nice. But first of all, I was getting them all the same length. And if you are gonna cut these on your miter saw, wear a face shield, be really, really careful because cutting ferrous material on a wood saw is pretty dangerous. Since I had all the pipe the same length, I was gonna set this little jig up with my miter saw set to 21 degrees. And then when I put them firmly against that stop block, go straight down, it is gonna give me a perfect 21 degree cut that's gonna be consistent across all three pieces. Again, I can't stress enough how careful you need to be when you're cutting copper, aluminum, anything like that on your miter saw. And do not try to cut steel, don't try to cut stainless steel. Something like a brass, aluminum, copper, it can actually be cut, but do not try to cut anything harder than that. I am just attaching these with a two-part epoxy. It's a fast drying epoxy. It sets up in a few hours, so it's not crazy five minute fast. And what I did was just set all the pieces in there, not loosely, but just in there snug, and then brought them over to a flat surface, which was my cast iron table saw. And then I was able to just wiggle the legs enough, twist them to make sure all of them sat perfectly flush before the epoxy cured. And this overall worked really, really well. I was surprised at how flat I was able to get these copper pipe legs. A few weeks ago, I did a video on how to attach tabletops to the bases properly. And I specifically said in there, do not use screws to attach bases to the top. So this week we're gonna be attaching this base to the top with screws. And it's not entirely me being a hypocrite. It's the fact that that video was meant mostly for larger tables, coffee tables, dining tables, that type of thing. There is really no problem using screws on something this small. The not using screws was because you need to allow for wood movement and there will be essentially no wood movement over the course of about an inch and a half that you see these three screws are going to be mounted. If you are gonna use wood screws in really any capacity, I highly, highly recommend getting a good set of tapered countersinks that you saw there. I was using a white side set. They have changed the way that I use screws with my woodworking. One thing I wish I would have done was used a thinner block to mount the legs to. And I'll admit, I don't actually love these copper legs. I thought they would look cooler in my head, but let me know in the comments what you guys think of the copper legs. If it's just me or you guys do not like them either. I decided the best test was gonna to be to use just a full glass of ice water and this is gonna give it weight. It's also gonna keep it cold and get the most condensation. So set it on the table and I decided to take an ice cube out and that'll give us just more water, more potential damage and see how that goes. And what I did was set it up for an hour and I had it plugged in to make sure my battery didn't run out, but you can see the time lapse here. It took a full hour, melted it, and that's gonna give us the most possible damage to the table and we'll see how it ended up. I came back after the hour was up, removed the glass, and the water was pretty well beaded up. So initially I was pretty inspired and I dumped it off to see if maybe all of it would come off and that wasn't the case. So it wasn't like putting never wet on it, but wiped it with a towel and then I got a little discouraged because I could still see some remaining. I thought it had failed the water test. So got a little bit bummed because I came and it looked like this, but what it was, it was just still physically wet and it took about 10 or 15 minutes just to dry out. I didn't have to do anything else to it. And I'm showing you here in the front yard in the bright sense, you can see every possible flaw and there was absolutely nothing to it. So overall, finished it extraordinarily well. Again, not a sponsored video. I wouldn't have cared if it had failed. Just want you guys to have the best possible finish, the best results. So overall, I think it was a pretty good win for the Rubio. Okay, that's the whole video. And if you're a regular to my channel, you know every week I like to give a little credit to the people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your comment with your next project or something you're working on right now, and I will know that you watched the entire video, and I promise I will answer all of your questions first. And again, if you like this video, if you got something from it, 
If you want to help the channel, please hit that little subscribe button right now. Thanks again.